In 2011, John Rowe, the outgoing chairman of Exelon Corporation, said that if coal is king, gas will be queen. Why would the chief of Exelon, a company that operates the largest fleet of nuclear power plants in the United States, be touting the importance of natural gas? Because three different variables have recently merged that make natural gas a preferred source of energy in the coming decades. What is natural gas? Natural gas is methane, the simplest hydrocarbon. Its chemical formula is CH4. This means that a single molecule of methane has one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. This chemical combination is broken and rearranged when we ignite methane. Lighting methane, whether in your home or in a power plant, produces heat, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Methane forms when once living matter dies and decomposes. Large, commercial quantities of methane are often found near coal and petroleum, our two other fossil fuel energy resources, because all three are created with similar biologic and geologic origins. We are most familiar with methane in our homes. Here it is used to cook food, boil water, and dry clothing. In 2011, the residential sector consumed 21% of all the methane burned in the United States. Power plants also use methane. Here it's ignited to spin gas turbines, which in turn spin generators, which produce electricity. In 2011, the electric power sector consumed 34% of all the methane burned in the United States. The electric power sector is the largest and fastest growing methane consumer in the country. Reason number one, gas will be queen because of increasing reserves. Natural gas reserves are rising quickly in the United States, even in the face of steady consumption growth. For example, between 2006 and 2009, reserves rose 29%, while consumption rose only 6 This trend, which is continuing now, essentially means we have more natural gas today than we had yesterday. While methane reserves are rising, prices are falling. Natural gas is commercially traded in units of 1 million British Thermal Units, or BTUs. In April of 2012, 1 million BTU traded for $1.93. The last time prices were this low was in late 2001. The increasing methane reserves in the United States are largely explained with directional drilling and hydraulic fracturing. In conventional drilling, gas wells are sunk in a primarily vertical fashion. Directional drilling, by contrast, allows rig operators to lay horizontal wells and thereby find and extract gas from specific beds of rock, such as gas-rich shale. Hydraulic fracturing, also called fracking, allows rig operators to extract methane from rock that would otherwise be too tightly grained to facilitate any gas flow. Rock is literally fractured in this process with a mixture of high-pressure water, sand, and chemicals. The cracks that open in the rock allow methane to flow into the well. Directional drilling and hydraulic fracturing are happening in many places throughout the United States. Two of the better known areas are the Barnett Shale in Texas and the Marcellus Shale in the Northeast. Reason number two, gas will be queen because it produces less carbon dioxide. Atmospheric scientists around the world have found conclusive evidence that our planet is warming. Rising carbon dioxide emissions are the primary reason. This is prompting electricity companies to pursue resources that emit less carbon per unit of energy produced. Coal is the most important energy resource for generating electricity in the United States. In 2010, 48% of the country's electricity was generated with coal. During that same year, coal also produced 81% of all the carbon dioxide emissions from electricity generation. Simply put, Burning coal produces more carbon dioxide than burning natural gas. One megawatt hour of electricity produced with coal emits 2,249 pounds of carbon dioxide. That same megawatt hour produced with methane emits only 1,135 pounds of carbon dioxide. This fact makes a huge difference when examining the carbon dioxide emissions from power plants. For example, a medium-sized 500 megawatt capacity power plant that burns coal will emit about 4 million tons of carbon dioxide in one year. The same capacity plant running on natural gas will emit only about 2 million tons of carbon dioxide in that same year. 
because nearly twice as much carbon dioxide is emitted from burning coal compared to burning natural gas, policymakers and industry strategists are now seeking to upgrade or close aging coal-fired power plants and build new, less emission-intense natural gas-fired power plants. Reason number three, gas will be queen because of combined cycle power plants. Typical steam-driven power plants are very inefficient. Transitioning an energy resource from chemical to thermal energy, and then from thermal to kinetic energy, is horribly inefficient because there are unavoidable energy losses along the way. Of any 100 units of energy that enter, only about 35 units of energy are produced in the form of electricity. The latest combined cycle power plants, by contrast, are 60% efficient. Of 100 units of energy that enter, 60 units of energy are produced in the form of electricity. This is accomplished by using the hot exhaust gases produced from a gas turbine to create steam for a steam turbine. Thus, a single power plant produces electricity with two different kinds of turbines, a gas turbine first, and then a steam turbine. This combination of turbines is why such plants are called combined cycle. The United States Energy Information Administration projects a 30% increase in domestic electricity demand from 2008 to 2035. Natural gas-fired power plants are expected to account for 46% of all new electricity generation capacity through this time period. So if coal is king, natural gas will be queen because of increasing reserves, lower carbon dioxide emissions, and the high efficiencies of combined cycle power plants.